on to Local Matters. Today, we'll talk about how you can hear some jazz and see some pop-up history around our towns, see what's happening locally and in our schools, bring you an all-new Apps Untapped, poet Joyce Wilson, and talk to a Plymouth Girl Scout troop who prove that it pays to always ask. But first, we're talking about taxes. Normally, at this time of year, the Plymouth Center for Active Living is preparing to participate in the AARP Tax Aid Program, which provides volunteer training and assistance to help elders file income tax forms. Julie invited Michelle Brady, PCAL's Director of Elder Affairs, and AARP volunteer Deb Etzel on to talk about what that will look like this year. Julie? Welcome, Michelle and Deb. So good to have you here today. Let's go right into it. Michelle, many seniors rely on PCAL every year to help them uh, with their tax preparation. Are you going to continue this service this year? Julie, we're very excited to announce that we are going to be able to do this program. The AARP tax program has come up with several options for doing taxes in a safe manner for both our patrons and the volunteers who are seniors themselves and for taxpayers. Cal will be able to host a low contact method where it's kind of like a car hop setup, a drop off style and pick up. Oh, that's excellent. So are you going to yeah. completely um, coordinate this with all the people? Like, what is your role in this whole process? Sure. So Cal's role, we are the host site for the AARP tax program. And our role really is working with AARP for coordinating site services and how they're going to implement their program. And also, we are the registration Stream. So people that are going to be doing their taxes um, through the AARP tax program and coming to Cal to do so, they'll register through our phone system, through Cynthia. Oh, that's excellent because they're used to working with you anyway, so that it's a comfortable um, uh, pr process for them to follow. Now, how many people in a normal year um, take advantage of the service that you offer? Sure. So on a typical year, it's about 500 tax returns. We've seen up to 700 in past years. Um, so you can imagine how renowned and, and loved this program is and how vital it is. Because we have to change kind of the scope of the way we do things with COVID, we're going to look to, we'll probably be able to execute about 200 this year. So there's a big change there, but we're happy that we're still able to do this. And do you have any um, alternate resources for your seniors that, for the people that you cannot accommodate because of uh, COVID? We don't have alternate resources at this time. Um, I'll have Deb speak to that a little bit more. Really not able to give recommendations um, for specific tax accountants and, and the like. Um, well, certainly if people call and they have issues, we'll try to help them navigate what works best for them and what might feel comfortable for community resources. Gotcha. And, and right before we get to Deb and ask a little bit more specific questions about the um, AARP tax agency, Foundation, um, does, PCAL offers an awful lot of other services for seniors. Can you just briefly go over Thank what you. also what you're doing right now for our seniors? Uh Absolutely. Thank you, Julie, for asking. You know, our facility's still closed, but we don't feel closed. We have a grab-and-go lunch program three times a week. Phenomenal food. Anyone in Plymouth can sign up for that. Um, just call us. We have Senior College. Amazing partnership with Bridgewater State University in which you could take online college classes, $65 a semester unlimited. We have some local folks teaching, some governmental, some dignitaries, really, really good stuff. We have virtual programming, everything from exercise to hot topics to debate, intergenerational on virtual, and the Senior Learning Network, which is an incredible opportunity to virtually explore things throughout the world and the United States. So there's a lot going on at Cal despite our doors technically being closed. That is just wonderful. Thank you, Michelle, for that. And Deb, can you tell us Thank about you. the AARP Tax Aid Foundation and what kind of services this foundation offers? Uh, AARP 
Kentucky Tax Deed Foundation has been around for um, well over 30 years, and it offers to do uh, taxes preparation for low to moderate income people. Um, other than that, I'm not qualified to tell you about the foundation in and of itself. That's beyond my scope. I'm a volunteer and have been a volunteer with taxes for 10 years, and that's my focus. Okay. And as a volunteer, can you just walk us through what the process of doing your taxes through AARP would look like for a typical senior? Okay. So first of all, it is we are not uh, we are focused on seniors, but you are not required to be a senior to be in our program. You just need to meet our our scope of requirements. So um, I don't want that. That's a um, false um, narrative that's out there that you must be a senior to for us to work with you. But this year it's very different. You will make your appointment through the council on uh, the center center for active living, just as we always have. But after that. Everything else will be very different. You need to pick up your forms. We have intake forms that must be completed, and you'll pick them up on the Friday before your, your appointment outside Cal uh, on the bench. You will uh, be required to fill those out and then come on Tuesday while you stay in your car at the time of your appointment. You'll be greeted by a AARP volunteer who will do a brief intake, um, and if you agree, by signing the form that you have to sign, that we will take your all your forms and scan them into a secure file. Then you can take your forms and go home. And the next day, a tax preparer will call you and finish your intake and then work on your return. And then after that, a quality review person will call and review your return with them, with you, and set up an appointment for Thursday to come pick up your return. And on Thursday, you'll drive up, you'll go over, briefly go over your return, sign the form to e-file it, and then go home with your, your tax return. And your uh, return will be e-filed at that time. Of course, masks must be worn by all people participating in this program. Wow, that's, it sounds like you, you definitely thought this whole thing through. If, if a senior or if anyone who's, who's going to do this can't bring the um, information themselves, can they have a proxy or their child or, or someone bring the information for them? No. Okay. You, you have to be, we have to be able to identify you. Um, you have to come with a, with a license, with your social security numbers. You, we are very strict at, at, at doing that. Okay. Um, Identity there are, safety. There are limited circumstances where we have done um, a power of attorney, but we won't do that this year. Okay. There's just right. not enough. We're we're down to a quarter of the people we can serve. Sure. So we're sure. Keep it very simple. Yep, and, and very secure. Are, are there any tax changes this year that that especially seniors should know about? Um, there are, and I just want to mention there's there's a couple of changes in what we're doing. Uh, normally, we're, we can do a, a wide variety of, of tax returns. We're limiting it this year because we're trying to reach those that need us the most. So we're not doing any, one, any return that itemizes. That people used to call that the long form. That's Schedule A. We're not doing any small businesses. That's Schedule C. And we're not doing any state returns that are not Massachusetts states. Um, so those things are, are really important to get out, that we're not doing that, that type of work. Um, a good proportion of our clients in the past have done that before. But as for differences, new things, the, the major two are that anyone can take up to $300 in qualified charitable distribute, qualified charitable donations without itemizing. So if you've made donations of uh, cash, check, or charge to a charity and you have that, that documentation, you can take up to $300 off your income for that particular, um, for that donation. This does not include um, bringing items to savers or, or giving uh, clothing to, to a clothing drive. It must be a cash donation. Okay. And the other one is the economic impact payments. If people have not gotten what they think they should have gotten, um, that can be remedied or might be able to be remedied on their current tax return. So um, there is that as well. So we um, need uh, people to pay attention to that. Okay, great. All really, really valid information. And how do folks go about scheduling their appointment with PCAL? Is there a certain time frame, a website, phone call? How do you do it? Um, it's a phone call. They, they will start taking phone calls February 1st. And you just call the main CAL number and speak with Cynthia. 
she has the reservations. Now, we only are doing, we're only preparing taxes on Tuesdays. We're all, I mean, we're only picking up taxes on Tuesdays and we can figure we can pick up about 20 a day. There's a limited amount of time in the day. There's a, a fair amount of uh, effort that goes into getting everything sorted and put together. So we're hoping we'll be able to do 20 each day. That's why we're so limited in the number of people we can serve. Got it, and that makes perfect sense. Um, Michelle, back to you. Um, what can you say to your senior population out there that you communicate with so effectively and so often who are nervous about doing their taxes during this current um, environment that we live in? Sure. I, well, as Deb had mentioned, I think, you know, the nerves and, and the, the stress probably will come from the fact that people realize, our seniors realize that we, we are only able to do lower numbers this year. So I know we've received a lot of phone calls from concerned seniors that rely on this particular program. Um, but to your point, I think we need to kind of take out the stress and fear of COVID. The reason we're doing it is in such a very thoughtful and safe manner is so people can drive up, feel like they're not leaving their cars, they have masks on, they're in their own safe space, and they don't have to do anything other than that. They'll come pick up an envelope prior to their appointment that's gonna be marked with their name on a bench outside. They're not gonna be interacting closely with people. They're not gonna be sitting across from someone as in traditional times. So safety-wise, I think seniors and anyone who utilizes this program should feel very secure with the manner by which we're doing it. There's a lot of phone work and just a little bit of um, interaction outdoors. Otherwise, you know, it's pretty good. And I think people should know the one thing that we're stressing this year, honestly, because of the limited number, you need to move through the appointments in a timely manner. If we have people that just don't show up or or, or just lagging in doing what they need to do, um, we're going to grow concerned for being able to complete that tax return. So for those that sign up, February 1st is the open, open season. So here we go. Okay. And finally, uh, last year, I know they extended uh, the, the, the end date of filing your taxes past April 15th. Is there any talk, is there any um, buzz out there about that happening again this year? Either of you, have you heard it's anything? It's something that um, we would, we, I'm sorry, it is something we would like to see, but um, the IRS hasn't contacted me yet, so okay. I have no way of knowing. Okay. So what's, what's the last possible appointment right now to schedule on a Tuesday to make sure that you can have your taxes filed in, in a timely manner? I believe it's April 6th. Correct. Okay, great. Um, ladies, thank you so much. This is such a, a valuable service that you always have offered, and I'm sure the seniors and others totally appreciate it. Um, and they can reach out to uh, PCAL, and I'm sure you'll have information on your website about this also. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pack TV. Thank you, Julie. Okay, back to you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Julie, Michelle, and Deb. For more information about the Center for Active Living, visit the Center's Facebook page at COA Plymouth or call them directly at 508 830 4230. If you live in or are visiting Duxbury, you'll begin to notice special exhibition panels appearing all across the town. Why? The Duxbury Rural and Historical Society is launching You Are Here, a special multi-site and online exhibition bringing the society's collections and Duxbury history out of the museums and into the community. Beginning February 1st, find these pop-up panels at partner locations all around the town of Duxbury, where place matters. There will be a virtual exhibition opening on February 11th at 7 p.m. To register and find a list of the confirmed pop-up panel locations, visit DuxburyHistory.org. Ordering takeout is one of the ways we can treat ourselves right now while supporting our local restaurants. But aside from the food in our takeout containers, what we often find are plastic straws and cutlery, which often end up in landfills and in our oceans. The girls in Plymouth Junior Girl Scout Troop 69156 noticed this too and decided to do something about it.
On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Girl Scouts was started in the early 1900s by one woman, Juliet Gordon Lowe, and it was to help girls connect with their community and their world. And today it's in over 147 countries, and there's over 10 million adults and girls who are part of Girl Scouts. Being a troop leader is really inspiring as you work with these young leaders and these young girls, and it's with their girl-led choices and their ideas. Our Plymouth Junior Girl Scout troop is made up of three young, amazing girls, and they have to do a community project, part of their Get Moving journey. And it has to do with reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, we kind of were just like talking about how we all have like a drawer of plastic silverware at home. And then you started talking about how 110 Grill um, um, asks if you want plastic silverware. And then like, like um, then we kind of just like talked and like to try, maybe like we could see if we could get other restaurants to try and do that too. Cause um, then we can reduce the use of plastic silverware. The girls researched and wrote their own presentation and they even designed a logo. The Chamber of Commerce in Plymouth invited them over to give their presentation and helped get their buy-in. Once I heard about Always Ask, I couldn't help but not want to get involved. Of course, it's working with our local restaurants who need help right now and knew that there could be good soft cost-saving ways for them, but also because I'm so excited to work with our youth, um, especially the Girl Scouts. They do such great work. I love the projects that they work on, um, and I always want to give back to the future of our generations, really. The Trubas had an incredible response from the community, and particularly the, the restaurant community, and Tavern on the Wharf in Plymouth invited them to lunch and hosted them for lunch so they could do their presentation and they were very impressed with the girls. When COVID hit here at Tavern, one of the things that we realized was that the first responders and the people on the front line could really use some appreciation. Everybody was working twice as hard. Everyone was working overtime. So we decided to put together a quite a bit of community outreach and we started feeding them. We started doing what we do best. We're a restaurant. We're a large facility and we had the ability to do so. We worked with local companies to secure donations to help and we were able to feed a lot of people. The visual tie-in for me was seeing the facts that the girls had presented in their report and seeing all the different packets of silverware that we were bringing and while they might have been thoughtful, they might not have been needed. Eight million metric tons goes into our ocean every year and it's killing animals like seabirds, sea turtles, and seals and other sea animals and we want to stop that. That's why, um, that's kind of the reason why we did Always Ask. That's a big thing with polluting. I was impressed that three young ladies had come up with such a novel concept, um, that they had taken the time to put something together and present it to the chamber. And when the chamber presented it to me, I thought it would be prudent for us to do our part and share the message. I believe this program will help the environment for everybody in the world because um, it will help save uh, all beautiful places and the ocean and all animals because all, like, all the animals in the ocean are swallowing the plastic, getting stuck in the plastic. You know? It's killing them and hurting them. So, I, and I really respect programs that help the animals. After the presentation, we kind of brainstormed within our staff to see what we could do. We want to help, but also because it's such a great idea. So we are reaching out to restaurants. We are going to be distributing stickers and making sure that they're informed and always ask. Um, we're also going to be putting it in our dining guide, we'll be including it in our newsletter, sharing on our social media. So there's so many opportunities for this and as we work closely with the restaurants we can communicate that the program with them and the status of it. Always ask is one of the hashtags that we utilize on our social media now and we always ask whenever someone calls for takeout we have a button that we've put in our POS system that has to be checked that you have to always ask to make sure they need the silverware and that we're not just putting it in the bag. Always Ask is a great community impact project for these girls. 
and watching the community respond is really amazing to see and to see the girls proud of themselves. This is what Girl Scouts is all about. Always ask. Thank you, Troop 69156, the Plymouth Area Chamber, and Tavern on the Wharf for becoming part of the change that will make a difference. Join renowned flutist, educator, composer, and director Galen Abdur Razak and the Plymouth Public Library for the virtual event Jazz and the Civil Rights Movement. Learn how jazz music played a critical role in the movement promoting racial equality and social justice. Mr. Abdur Razak's lecture will include music and his performance of a flute solo. Check out flutejuice.net for more details and visit the Plymouth Public Library website to register for this February 1st event presented by the Dr. Richard M. Schiff Forum. The South Shore Trustees Reservations have been descended upon by herds of hardy reindeer. Crafted by Girl Scout and Cub Scout troops, these handmade wooden reindeer are hidden cleverly among the trails. Each have their own personality, which you can discover by scanning a QR code with your phone. This self-guided scavenger hunt is a fun way to hike and explore the trails at World's End, Whitney and Thayer Woods, and Ware River Farm in Hingham, the Norris Reservation in Norwell, and Two Mile Farm in Marshfield. Snap a selfie with your favorite deer and post it to social media using the hashtags for each reservation and be entered to win a prize. Learn more about the South Shore Reindeer Quest at the Trustees website. Tiff and Erica are back for the first Apps Untapped of 2021 and this time they're giving you tips and tricks on journaling apps. Oh, hi, you're back. Welcome back to Apps Untapped. I'm Tiff here again to bring you our first episode of 2021. Happy New Year, friends. It's great to see you again. 2020 is over and I can't express to you in words how much I loathed this year. It's a new year, which means a fresh start. And like most people, I've made goals for myself for 2021. And one of those goals includes taking better care of myself because apparently that's become a thing. Tiff, are you okay? Yeah, I'm so good, everything's perfect. So good. Mmm, scary. So today we're gonna talk about self-care apps, specifically a little app called Mood App. Now, Mood App is a free, that's right, free, journaling app that gives you the tools to help track your mood, express the feelings you might have through journaling, live texting, meditation games, and live venting. There's a lot of features on this app, so let's keep it moving. When you go into the app as a new user, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set up a profile. Let the Mood app know a little something about you. Choose a fun username. Pick an avatar. I mean, where else do you get to be a raptor? This is a journaling app, so I should probably cover the journaling function. Journaling itself is a great way to let go of emotions, relieve stress, and organize your thoughts. It's also a great way to document memories and see how far you've come in your personal growth. And on Mood App, you have a digital journal right at your fingertips. There are some cute functions here. In addition to writing in your journal, you can also change your fonts, use or take a picture, and choose from a long list of moods. There's also a cool feature where you can use writing prompts in case you want to write, but the words aren't flowing. There's a variety of prompts to choose from, everything from finish that sentence to evening affirmations. And they really keep the mind going. I don't know if it's like a trendy thing or something people like to throw around when they have nothing else to give you advice for, but it seems that everyone and their mom recommends meditating. You got stress? Meditate. You got car trouble? Meditate. You can even use a cup. You got a boring Zoom meeting? 
or a variety of different things. Your hands. Meditate. Your you can also use your feet to hold the bottle, but I wouldn't recommend that unless you do yoga. Um, hello? But if you're anything like me, meditating is really hard. We got a lot of thoughts in our heads. So Mood App makes it easy for you to get your meditation on. There's this thing called Space Out. Hit the comment icon on the right of the side of the screen and the app takes you to a galaxy far, far away. It then prompts you to repeat these affirmations that make you feel great about yourself. Make sure you turn up the volume to hear some really cool, slightly cheesy galactic meditation music. Also, try to ignore the fact that they spelled the word phrases wrong. Oops. Sometimes you want to vent, and sometimes you don't want to vent to people you know. Friends and loved ones will often tell you what you want to hear. And no, this is not a replacement for a licensed therapist. But if you feel like you want to chat about your feelings to a community of interweb friends, Food App's got that for you. Vent is basically a live journal where you can post about your feelings. There are different categories to choose from, such as friends, family, health, and relationships. People can comment and give you advice, and you can befriend those friends, or supporters as they call them. Within the vent feature, there is also a live option. It will show people who are chatting now and will let you chat and interact with them in real time. It also gives you a live video option. Me personally, live video chatting with people I don't know is not really my jam, but as long as you are super safe about it, you do you. So now that we've chatted about the features on Mood, let's chat about some tips and tricks, shall we? Try to journal every day. I know, I know that sounds like a big commitment, but hear me out. We have a lot of stressors going on right now, and as humans, we tend to bottle things up. It's important to let that stuff out so you don't turn into a massive volcano. And as cute as emotional meltdowns sound, they're really not. Oh, and if you do decide to jot your thoughts down, track your mood too, so you can keep a record of how your insides are feeling. How can you track your mood? Well, I'm glad you asked. The app allows you to track your own personal data. Not the scary kind of data, but it allows you to track your feelings. Have you been feeling negative or positive in the last week? That way, you can track if you've been feeling down for too long. Now, I'm gonna put my mom hat on now. I can't emphasize this enough. Do not exchange any personal information with other users. When I created my profile, I didn't even use the location because even though the world is filled with lovely, kind people, there are also some weirdos among us and not the good kind of weirdos. Well, I'm already feeling great about this new year. We have a vaccine on the way, the murder hornets calm down, and we managed to stay away from a zombie apocalypse. And we've got a new app to help us practice better self-care. Just remember, there's only one you, and that you is pretty awesome. So take care of yourself. This has been Apps Untapped. It's been great chatting with you. Be well. Set in a volcano-studded peninsula in the Russian Far East, Disappearing Earth is the debut novel of author Julia Phillips and the book chosen for the Pembroke Public Library's February Book Club discussion. Each of the novel's chapters are from the viewpoint of a different female character, all connected to each other by the disappearance of two sisters. The virtual book club takes place via Zoom on February 2nd at 6.30. Visit the library's website to register. Erica is here to tell us what's happening in the schools. Erica? On February 4th at 6.30 p.m., join Pembroke High School for a highly interactive social justice community workshop designed to show the work Pembroke High School is doing to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion for all students. This virtual workshop will be facilitated by Dr. Andre Morgan and guest speaker Dr. Darnisa Amante Jackson. They'll identify how systematic racism impedes learning opportunities, explore strategies to raise learning outcomes, and take a deep dive into the challenges and opportunities linked to equitable access for all students. For Zoom meeting details, please refer to the Pembroke High School newsletter or contact the school. National Honor Society members at Silver Lake High School are now available for extra help and tutoring every Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. This great opportunity for any student needing additional academic support is available in all subject areas. You'll need a code to join the NHS Extra Help Google Classroom, so please contact Silver Lake to get yours. You can also email Ms. Dillon at rdillon at 
slrsd.org with any questions you have. Elizabeth, back to you. Thank you, Erica. Combine stunning virtual astronomical panoramas, a live musical performance by award-winning composer Keith Patchell, and the expert guidance of astrophysicist Paul M. Sutter, and you will have Mars Band, the ultimate audiovisual tour of the universe. This virtual feast for the senses offered by the Museum of Science is never the same show twice, but is always a magical journey through the universe and not to be missed. This free sensory experience takes place on February 3rd from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. To register, visit the Museum of Science Facebook page. Joyce Wilson has taught English at both Suffolk and Boston University. She is creator and editor of the online magazine, The Poetry Port. Her chapbook, The Need for a Bridge, and second full-length collection, Take and Receive, were both published in 2019. This is her original work. This is Joyce Wilson. I will read a group of poems about matters local, on the South Shore, and near to my heart. The first poem is inspired by an article in the Boston Globe about a leaf blower beef between two neighbors. It's from the point of view of the officer making the report. Town Police Report, Bridgewater, Mass. The officer on duty was amused by neighbors who complained they were abused when on one side a resident was drawn to blowing leaves into another's lawn. While standing where the boundary divides, he found more leaves had fallen on both sides. It seems the leaves were only being fair by falling generally and everywhere. And during this pandemic, we always face the dilemma of wearing a mask. This is a story I heard from a grandmother about her three-year-old grandson. Slant praise. He'll wear his new protective facial mask so long as he won't have to wear his pants. And I'm often out walking my dogs. Um, this is a memory about uh, at the interaction between two of them, the dominance, the compensation. And it seemed there was the one, I don't name the dogs in this, but there was always the one dog and the other dog. One. I drop a leash, the other picks it up, to be of use, especially to top the one who catches every ball that's tossed, then cries, a baby when the ball is lost. The other watches, waiting for his chance. With ball in mouth, he lengthens his advance. Two. One walks on water as he'd cross a field, then sinks in tidal wavelets, forced to yield, the other sees the ocean as a threat, is horrified that one has gotten wet. Whenever one will try to slip away, the other's bark is heard across the bay. Three. And even now, the one has died, the other barks to bring him to his side. He listens for his step across the green, will know him when he comes. Months intervene. The other starts to stretch his limbs and run. But now he's not the other, he's the one. This poem is inspired by a painting. The title is Blue Sky Take Me Away. Uh, the painting is by Kevin Korob, and I wrote the poem for Soaring Without Limits that runs a contest at Brockton Library. Blue Sky Take Me Away. What is freedom to me? Like lyrics of a song I follow, mesmerized. Like waves of blossoms born aloft from storm-tossed trees. Or thunderhead, black mane I, to cling to. I am hauled, wind-burned and glorious. Prepared to take my nerve between, beneath the teeth and fly. Sky-diving amateur, without a cord or chute. Until I grow with it, divine blue emptiness that leads me on, but dares not try to hold me down. When we would drive into town from the South Shore, we would often cross the Four River Bridge, which uh, was a drawbridge. Now it's a vertical lift. 
And the frustration is always that you might be caught when the bridge is up to let water traffic through and you have to wait. <clears throat> I wrote a whole book of poems, 20 poems, about the Four River Bridge, the need for the bridge. And this poem is about how it can be pleasurable to wait with the other traffic. The Dreamer, suspended on the bridge. The driver gets out of his car to watch the bridge gates in their mechanized descent. He leans over the metal rail to match his mood with twilight's quiet argument. And then the motor's low murmuring idle and shush of waves against the tugboat shoulder surprise him with the music of their babble. He wants their tranquil sounds to last forever. The moment bursts infectious like a fever. An idler's dreaming must give way to motion. Beneath the rhythmic noises of the harbor, the tide releases currents to the ocean. As engines roll each lane in single file, he takes a breath and cannot help but smile. And recently, uh, my husband and I went into town. Um, I guess we've been into town twice uh, during the pandemic, um, for usually for doctor's appointments. And this is about a trip we made in the fall, a trip into town during the pandemic. As we join the parade of cars on the solemn roads where the stately trees are all marked for removal and people carry signs and shout in hope that the, with the trees, they'll save their neighborhood. We seem to have joined a temporary state of existence where nothing is certain. Everything seems to be closed, but the hospitals. I am too early for my appointment. I must wait in the lobby. The cafe has coffee. John is still driving, looking for a place to get his breakfast. He ends up away, far away from this dead city center. We wear our masks, we don't wear masks. We drive past the museum on our way home. I vow to get tickets to come back for the show, the current show. I reserve tickets, but in time I do not go. It is the surge, the second surge, and we must all stay home. So I've made a promise to myself after this experience that once the pandemic has lifted and uh, I get the vaccine, and the city opens up again, I want to go to the MFA, and uh, I want to see this painting. It's uh, the cover of my book, Take and Receive, and it's a painting called Zinnias and Marigolds by Herman Dudley Murphy in Gallery 230, and I wrote this poem. Uh, Zinnias and Marigolds were my mother's favorite flowers. I wrote this poem to her based on the painting. What companion would you select in this common country garden? Both zinnia and marigold, the elegant and sovereign. Elegant, the zinnia is tall, hardworking, vigorous, in yellow, pink, magenta splendor, a favorite of the local vendor who praises its unerring charm, waltzing on late summer's arm, bowing, sumptuous, twirling, chaste, beside the rose, almost straight-laced, reaching out to gather in, when cut, its blossoms come again. Sovereign, the marigold will keep its yellow petals rolled. The double gold anemone supports our summer's currency that must not be withheld but spent according to our agreement on what we need, how much we have. Its beauty, bold and curative, can keep the pests away from those most precious of our tomatoes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joyce. And thank you for staying with us for this episode of Local Matters. From all of us at PAC-TV, have a happy and safe week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>